Uh, today we're going to be discussing uh, a little bit more details about the uh, key pieces of hardware. We looked at some hardware before as well. We talked about what the different cables are and uh, what type of different cables are used for connecting different types of networks and what uh, qualities of these cables allow for different types of transmission to take place. If I different, you know, they have their own benefits and their own drawbacks and so forth. Now let's look at some other pieces of important pieces of hardware that are used when we are connecting a locally the network system, right? Now, originally, as mentioned before, as we discussed this in great detail before, a local area network is a network that is limited to within one building or one room, one office. Uh, so if we look, if you revert back to our bank banking system example, the network that is used within one branch is a good example of what a, a local area network will be. Now, one local area network, uh, if, in fact, if you have multiple local area networks, you can connect them together to form a larger network. And of course, the interconnecting hardware that you need is you know, switches and routers, so on and so forth. But this is essentially the basis of creating a larger network. Now, our banking system relies on the principle that each branch has its own network and each branch is therefore connected to other branches via a, global, a, a nationwide network. And this network is forming what is known as a wide area network. Now, We've discussed this in detail before, but essentially as a user, as, as a branch employee, for example, you are accessing a terminal that is connected to your local area network only. And you have no direct link with the wide area network that is used for the nationwide banking system. And I'm saying nationwide, but banking systems are now capable of connecting, be, being connected via the internet as well. So basically they are international networks now. So anyway, as one single user of this network, the bank employee, for example, is accessing their local area network, which is their system in their bank. And they're accessing it, they're only local, they're, they're accessing their own local area network only. And this local area network is therefore connected to a wide area network, which in part forms our nation, nationwide access. So this is how we studied local area networks. It's multiple local area networks make a wide area network. Now let's look at what a local area network was before we saw the twisted way. Now we understood when we talk about cable, we're going to be looking at the wireless medium as well. But essentially, when we look at the wired configurations, we we have three options in wired configuration, wired cables. We have the coaxial cable, we have the twisted pair, and we have the fiber optics. Fiber optics, of course, offer the best speed, but they are they also offer the highest cost. And that's why the next best option that we see today in local area networks is the twisted pair Ethernet cable. But before Ethernet cables, we had coaxial cables used for wide area, uh, our local area networks. Yes, that cable that is connecting your TV to the cable TV transmission that is coming to your home. That cable was actually used. That was the primary means of communication with within a local area network as well. And Basically, if you look at the bus configuration, which is the earlier examples, the most reliable, robust example in the earlier configurations of a local area network, there was the bus topology. And essentially, the, as the main part of a bus topology was the central bus, the central cable that is running through the length of the entire network. Now, this network, this central bus is known as your branch cable, so, sorry, thick backbone, this is the thick backbone cable. It's a thicker cable because it's supposed to support, it is providing support to a lot of connected terminals. So it has to be slightly thicker and allows for more data transfer, higher bandwidths. Now this central thicker cable is known as the main backbone cable. This is the main backbone cable. Each computer or terminal, this is one terminal here, is connected to this central branch cable, sorry, uh, backbone cable with another thinner cable, which is known as the branch cable. So each terminal has its own branch cable that connects to this backbone cable. So this is my branch cable and this is my backbone cable. 
so apparently this branch cable does look thicker than the backbone cable but that's in reality this is just a diagram in reality that's not the case the backbone cable is thicker as opposed to the branch cable okay this branch cable is connecting this terminal with this backbone cable through a device that is known as the t connector this is the t connector right here and as you can see here all computers all terminals it could be a printer as well for example all terminals that are connected to this main cable here are connected through the t connector okay so if i am talking about a coaxial cable all ports that are used being used here they look like this this is what they look like so if you look closely this is exactly what it looks like with the cables that are connecting at the back end of your key tv as well this is what they look like now everywhere we're using these this configuration this is known as the bnc connector bayonet nail concealment connector so this is the bnc connector so at the time of coaxial cables we were using bnc connectors for all ports that were connecting to this uh, a coaxial cable for example okay now at the ends of this bus cable we have what is known as a terminator now essentially what a terminator does as the name this as it suggests the name suggests the terminator basically terminates something and what is is it terminating it is actually terminating a data transfer now why would i want to terminate a data transfer why would i want to terminate uh, data why do I, why want to delete the data why would i want to do that now think about this as we mentioned before a bus topology relies on data being transferred on this central bus cable and essentially all of the data is being broadcast broadcasted in all directions so all connected computers will be able to receive this transmission sent from this computer to say for example this intended computer apart from this intended computer these remaining two computers as well as, as well as itself as well all computers will receive its own transmission it will receive this transmission now the way the bus is organized is that this data is transferred if this was the intended sender this is the sender this is the intended recipient this data is sent in this direction and it travels to all computers and it till it reaches this computer these unintended computers will simply look at the mac address and they will see that this is not the mac address for them this is not their mac address in which case they will ignore the transmission and discard the data whereas this computer will identify its own mac address in the transmission and use it for further processing but other than that all other computers they will ignore it but what happened here is this data sent uh, this computer sent data in this direction and it traveled to all computers and it kept on going now imagine for just one second that this piece of hardware is not here this terminator is not connected now what would happen is that at the end of this cable at the end of this line it will start bouncing back this will echo back the same transmission that was sent from this computer it traveled all to all computers and it reached the end of the bus and it came it will now bounce back it will reflect echo back and will start come back to all other computers again and will keep on doing this it will reach this end and will echo back again it will keep on that's the way the bus is it echoes back transmissions in both directions now if data is being echoed it means that if it will that echoed data will therefore therefore corrupt other transmissions as well because as we mentioned before this is a shared medium so every device has to make use of this medium so i wanted to send data to this computer and i waited my turn now since this cable is now free i can send data but if i am done sending data my transmission will keep on echoing in this central bus and other computers who want to send data will think that some transmission is being carried out and they will wait for their turn which they don't have to because that that data transmission is actually just an echo echo of what just happened and it should not happen so that's why we have terminators at both ends of this bus so if data is transmitting from here it will go to all computers it will still be broadcast but once it reaches the end at the termination point 
that data will be terminated, they'll be deleted here, and it will not echo back again. And same thing goes, for example, if this computer was transmitting, the direction of transmission will be here. And, it, and in, in fact, it doesn't have to be here. If a computer was here somewhere, it will also receive because it's broadcasting. In any case, if data transmission is received in either case, in either direction of the terminators, it will be deleted. It will not echo back. So that is the primary purpose of the terminator. And it is specifically these, these pieces of hardware that are being mentioned right now, terminator, T connector, these are specifically part of the LAN topology. Now, just a quick recap, terminator basically prevents data being echoed on your central bus. And if, it's, if the data is being echoed on the central bus, it may cause other computers data transmission to be corrupted. So that's why we have to add terminators on both ends to make sure that data does not echo back. Now, if you look at the BNC connector, this is the T, T connector for coaxial cables. So as you can see here, this is exactly what it's supposed to be here. This is the end where I connect the terminal, and these two ends are where the bus is supposed to be passing by. Now, this point looks like your the back of your TV because this is a BNC connector. This is where the coaxial cable used to connect. And as you can see here, this is my BNC connector terminal. This is the BNC terminal. So I connect the cable on this end, and on the other end, there's nothing there. It's not going anywhere. There's no outgoing cable. So basically, it just comes here and never leaves. It terminates here. This, the data is completely destroyed here. A transmission is lost here because they, it doesn't have to go anywhere ahead of that. So this is the purpose of a terminator over here. And we have both of these at both ends. We have two of these on both ends of this bus. Okay. And mother, another interesting part of your of a, of any network is what is known as a network interface card. So this is my network interface card. The major purpose of a network interface card is to allow a computer, any computer, to be able to connect to a network. Now, modern computers, modern laptops, for example, they have network interface cards, and they are primarily focused on communicating via Wi-Fi, and that's OK. But earlier computers, and in, even some computers and their extenders, if they want them, they come equipped with network interface cards that are capable of connecting to Ethernet cables. Now, as you can see here, they will have some port that looks like this. That's an Ethernet port. So basically, what a network interface card does is that it's the piece of hardware that allows communication with my computer with a network. So if you don't have a network interface card, you don't have two things. One is that you will not be able to, you don't have the ability to connect to any network, not the internet, not any network, not even the locally, not even a locally network. So if you want to connect to a network, you need the hardware that allows you to do that. So that's your network interface card. And the second thing you will not have if you don't have a network interface card is a MAC address. So basically the MAC address we refer to so much is basically not your computer's address, but it is actually linked with your, your, with your network interface card. So if you go ahead and change your network interface card, that means a new MAC address will become part of your computer. It's that simple because that address is not linked with your computer, but it's linked with your MAC address. So that is the option that is the no it's not that's the necessary piece of hardware that you need to be able to connect to any network now the exact same things now let's look at what it what it what the configuration for your coaxial cables look like so this is one sorry this was the coaxial cables now what it looks like for twisted pair now this is the twisted pair now twisted pair cables have two options this is the rj11 size and this is the rj45 now you are familiar with this cable this is a cable that connects your landline phone with the, uh, you know, with your receiver, and you have another line that's coming at the back of your from your main cable outside. So this is basically that cable. This is that connector. This is the RJ11, still being commonly used for your locally, uh, sorry, for your landline phones. Whereas this is another variation of the uh, twisted pair cable, and this is your RJ45, and this is your in commonly known as your Ethernet cable. And this is what's being used right now more commonly in your local area networks. So this is the RJ configuration using the, the twisted pair. 
and this is what looks like in the same uh, style this is what a terminator looks like for an rj configuration as you can see here it just goes in and there's nothing coming out on the other end so it basically just discards that that comes into its way so this is the terminator for an rj uh, for your twisted pair configuration so earlier representations of your uh, bus uh, of your lands were implemented through coaxial cables then we shifted towards twisted pair and that's why we have we're commonly using your rj11 and rj45 configuration and now that we since moved on for your fiber optics there are different connectors for that as well now let's just look look through some details regarding this network uh, we have the central thick main cable that we already saw that we've got these C connectors that are you connect your thinner cables with the main backbone cable and through your thinner cables your terminals are connected uh, at the end of the bus we have terminators terminators basically mean that signals can be reflecting down the prevented from reflecting down the bus and if it does reflect down it will cause other transmissions to be uh, corrupted terminator a little bit details on terminators data can be sent in one direction at a time as soon as the data data reaches the extreme end of the terminator removes the data from the line to avoid any further collisions these are the two types this is the rj45 and this is for your uh, coaxial cable the, the bnc connector a, a bus can be now this is interesting a bus can be extended by two buses linking two buses together using the repeater due to attenuation over long distances. So if you want to exceed the central bus to allow for more computers to connect it, you can do that by adding a longer bus to it. But of course, since you got now a longer bus to it and the biggest problems with our copper-based data transfer uh, mediums was attenuation. Now what attenuation was, that signal becomes weaker over longer distances. So if it's a coaxial cable, attenuation has the most effect. Twisted pair has lesser effect, but it does affect it. So to avoid that signal distortion and weakening over long distances, we can we make use of repeaters. Now, as you mentioned before, repeater is optimal here because we're talking about lo local area networks. And within a fixed building, specifically like a local area network, with inside a building and with fixed locations, repeaters perform better. As opposed to in mobile environments, your amplifiers do a better job. So Right here, since we're talking about local network, repeater should be a better choice here. Now, again, repeating, why do we need a repeater? Because we're extending our bus cable. And we're, why, would we, why do we want to extend our cable? Because we want to add more computers to it. We want to enlarge our network. So that's one of the benefits of your bus topology. It's very easily scalable. And by scalable, it means that it becomes larger over time. But of course, I will have to take into account that the basic cable loses its signal strength over some distances because of which we will need repeaters to make sure that signal does not become weak. Now, using bus networks, it is also possible that I may want to connect multiple local area networks together. So one very one option that we just saw is that increasing the length of the bus and adding more computers to it, that's okay, but that's then that's just only still one network. But what if I have two networks and I want them to work together as a single network? In that case, I need what is known as a bridge. Now, basically, this is what a bridge is. I have two local area networks. I've got a LAN A and a LAN B, and these both networks combine together to work as a single as a single network. Now, we have a central device here. This is known as a network bridge. Now, this network bridge essentially is called a bridge because I'm bridging. This process is known as bridging. I'm bridging the gap between two separate networks. A network bridge is a computer networking device that creates a single aggregate network of or network segments. Oh, sorry, aggregate network from multiple communication networks or network segments. This function is called network bridge. Now, this bridge primarily does what? It connects multiple networks together to make it larger network. Apart from that, it also has something a bus network may be constructed in form of segments. Each segment will be constructed together by a bridge. Each the bridge stores MAC addresses, a network address or MAC addresses of the AND systems in the two segments it is connected, in which is known as the bridging table. So essentially, this bridge 
is maintaining the record of all of these computers that are connected, not only one network, but all computers that are connected to all networks that are part of the person. And it has MAC address because it's local network MAC address is significant here. And it maintains those list of addresses in what is known as a bridging table. Okay, so this is these are just few pieces of hardware that we like. Okay, now one thing we also need to make sure is the, what is the difference between segments and different networks? So essentially, if you have, you know, you are increasing the size of a network and you want to create, increase the size of it in, through segments, those are segments of a network. But on the other hand, if you have existing networks and you want to work, make them together, so you, they, you have separate networks. In either case, if you're creating segments of network, you're creating networks, smaller networks, and you want to work, want them to work collectively as a larger network, you will need what is known as a bridge. Okay, so last thing, the LAN port on the end system is part of the network interface card. So this is the LAN port, all computers have it. If it's a Wi-Fi, uh, Wi-Fi connected device, Wi-Fi enabled device, and Wi-Fi only device, so most mobile cellular phones, you know, mobile tablets and stuff like that, they don't have, you know, uh, LAN ports and stuff like that, but they are capable of connecting to networks. In that case, they're relying on wireless networks. So you don't necessarily see any sort of ports there. It's just there, it's just up, it's working. The, the network interface card is working. But in any case, the port, if you see an active port on your computer, that port is definitely the that port that is connected to the network interface card and it uniquely identified it identified by its mac address onto a network we will discuss later mac address uh, let's discuss later in the course so some basics for your bus topology locally networks now let's focus on what your star configuration looks like now again we're still keeping up with the theme with respect to locally networks now this is an example of how star configuration works now, if you remember that the major difference between your bus topology and your star configuration was that your bus topology had a central backbone cable and that allowed the connection of all simultaneously connected computers now of course since the medium was shared and to allow for a fair without any corruption of data transmission we had to employ techniques such as the csm cd now this was very popular. This, this technique was very, you know, widely used because it was robust, it was cheap, it was easy to install, a relatively simple process. But this is what is now now used more more commonly. Now, what is this? This is the switch star topology. Now, the star topology makes use of a central device. Now, this central device can be either a switch, a router, or a hub. Now, every computer. Every connected terminal, for example, has a dedicated link to this central device. So this, for example, if this computer wants to communicate with this computer, it will send its message to the central switch, and that switch will therefore forward it to this computer over here. Now, one of the major differences between a switch and a hub is that a hub isn't capable of distinguishing between different intended recipients. So for example, if this computer wants to send it to this computer, and if this central device was a hub, it means that this computer sent it to this hub, because that's the only thing it's directly connected to, and this hub was sent it to all communicating devices, all the devices. So it's not distinguishing between who to send to, it just sends it to everyone. And of course, the intended recipients, only then will they, they will further you know, process the data and the rest of the computers who were not intended recipients will simply proceed in deleting it. So in a sense, how a bus policy works in broadcasting data, you can say that the hub, in fact, you don't, you can say that it really, this is really what the case here, that hub broadcasts the data to every connecting device. Finally, this is a router. We'll be looking at the router in more detail later on, but router is basically, you can say, is a computer on its own. and because of its processing power, it is capable of deciding which path to choose to reach the intended recipient. And routers are basically the building blocks of our internet infrastructure that we are using right now. Okay, so this is the star device. We have a central device that is connected to each computer directly. Since there is a direct access to each of the central device, there is no multiple sharing. 
it gives a link so we don't need csm std csm std was primarily need for robust code each our system has the ty same type of cable with same connector so all are using for example if one is computer is using is the rj configuration cable the rj45 cable for example that means all computers will be using the same this central jo device set this will also be only recognizing the rj configuration cable the cables need to be longer than the bus as each end system has to be able to connect the central device so that's one thing to keep in mind the cables are probably lost longer because they may be located at different distances from the central device so they have to accommodate the, that length as well the central device may be a hub switch or router the switch being the most common as it can direct its unicast trans communication to a specific end system so switch will do a unicast whereas your uh, hub will use a broadcast so it's an is is actually a, it's called the dump device as well because it's not deciding who to send to it just sends it to everyone okay now let's check out what's happening with wireless NAS. so so far we were looking at your wired lands both the bus as well as your uh, star topology now let's try to understand different pieces of hardware that are involved in the wireless lands wi-fi or wireless lan which is more commonly known in most countries we are familiar with the term wi-fi is a term associated to wireless ethernet we'll be looking at the ethernet protocol in a little bit detail uh, in this chapter but if there are no wires involved and you're using radio frequencies then that's a wireless ethernet it is formally known as the IEEE 802.11 so basically IEEE is an institute for electronics and electrical engineers and 802 the mention we will see this term here again 802 is somewhere else as well but 802 is a committee's name that's a committee number 802 and their version number 11 that's this is basically the certification of wireless internet wireless lands i i triple e 802.11 certified and under this code here so this institute of electronic engineers uh, uh, they their committee number 802 has approved the use of wireless lands and this is the official uh, you know name for it uh, that certification the standard uses radio frequencies for data transmission the central device in a wi-fi lan is a wireless access point the wireless access point can communicate with an end system in the wireless LAN and provided that the end system has a wireless network interface card. So obviously if you want to be able to use a wireless network, your device should have a wireless network interface card. You cannot expect a wild, wired computer or a, a regular wired network interface card to be readily available to use in a wireless network. So it's not, it just can't do it. It has wire, wired ports, uh, your Ethernet ports, and the only way you can access data for uh, you can you can give it access to a network is through that port. But if a computer or a device has a Wi-Fi enabled network interface card, then that is known as a wireless network interface card. And what that means is that that particular device is capable of connecting to Wi-Fi signals that are provided within its range. Now, this is one term we saw here: wireless access. What is the difference between wireless access points, which is this one, and a wireless route? So as you can see here, this wireless access point is providing a wireless network, which is, of course, wireless. And I'm sitting, for example, I'm sitting here with my cell phone and I'm connected to the wireless access point. On the back end of this wireless access point, you can see a cable is coming in and out of this device over here. And if we follow that cable, it will take you to possibly a wired network or it can also be taking you to the internet so let's just say just for example there's this network here that is not connected to the internet yet it's not connected to the internet but it's a network it's a local area network and it existed say for the last 15 or 20 years and that means since it's using old technology uh, you know, ancient technology, uh, legacy technology is primarily based on, you know, a wired network running on Ethernet cabling. Now, let's just say that in the same build office building where this wired network exists, I also want to set up a wireless network as well. And 
this is a new building this is a completely new building and i want to connect i want since it's a new building and i'm using newer technologies i'm capable of using a wi-fi network to set up a local wireless lan and that's okay that's fine but at the same time i want this wireless lan to be able to communicate with this wired lan as well because i want these both networks to communicate with each other possibly some sh sharing some resources as well so i want both of these networks both wi wireless and wired networks to work together now that only way that's possible is that if i have a central device that allows your wi-fi network to be able to communicate with the wired network because other than that any device on this wired network does not is not capable of transferring data via radio waves because they don't have wireless network interface cards and these devices which have wireless network network interface card may not necessarily have ports that are used commonly for wired networks so that means i have to communicate somehow with this network this network with this network now the way to do that is we allow for a wireless access point now this wireless access point will connect this wi-fi complete network and every other device that's connected in this network through this wireless signal and on the other hand i'm connecting my completely wireless network through this cable with the wired network and this because of this wireless access point both of these networks wired and wi-fi networks may be able to work together now let's look at the remaining half of this diagram as you can see here on the other hand i have something that is known as a wireless router so this wireless router is doing what is allowing my entire configuration the entire network that i've made up by combining these two networks to be able to connect to the internet now essentially if i need a wireless router or sometimes you know it can also be referred to as a gateway in certain applications if i need such a device it 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 may also mean that i am connecting i'm trying to connect two different types of network now obviously this is a local area network okay understandable that it's part of its wifi wireless part of its wired but okay because of this wireless access point they are working together and they form a completely separate local area network and they are working together but at the same time i want this entire local area network to be able to connect to the internet as well in which case i will need another device in between which is known as a wireless router so by now it should be clear that the wireless access point is not connecting me to the internet but basically what it is doing is that is connecting a wifi device or a wifi network for you uh, a complete wifi network to a wired network through a wireless access point okay now i have established a network using these two sub networks a wired one and a wireless one now i want this network both of these networks to be able to access the internet as well now for that i will need ax to access internet through this wireless router so if i want to give my network an internet connectivity i'll have to do it with the wireless router. so by definition it should be clear now the wireless router allows internet connectivity with our existing network so what is the difference between wap and router wireless access point contains wireless devices to existing wireless lan as is doing over here router performs two tasks it acts like a traditional wireless access point as well as a gateway now this is a term we just used gateway now gateway means its gateway is basically a device that connects two different types of networks now your local area network okay agree it's just a network but it has so many things different underlying architecture wise there are no so many things different than the basic internet because the internet is a huge network it's supposed to be catering all network requirements all over the world so there is no way that its architecture is the same as these two architectures they are designed to form one local area network task and basically provide services to one local area network one lan whereas this is meant to create services for the entire world a very very wide area network so if you have a local area network trying to connect a with a wide area network there's a great chance the underlying technologies are separate to accommodate for this under difference in technologies we can make use of a route a wireless route 
So this, with, with the help of this wireless router, I'm connecting a completely separate network, which is the internet, to a completely separate LAN, which is the combination of these two LANs. And how are these two LANs con connected together? Through this wireless access point. Just a quick recap of the terminologies. A system providing its services to end system is the server. A repeater is a device that connects two tables and provides full length signal to the second cable. A bridge is a device that connects two segments of a LAN. A network interface card is a component used to identify the end system. A switch is a connecting device that can be used to send a unicast message between the sender to switch to switch to just one intended recipient. Not only unicast, it could be broadcast as well. Only if, for example, I want this computer wants to send data to all computers, in which case it's broadcasting. It can also carry out multitasking, in which course it is possible that I want to only send data to this computer, these two computers, in which case leave the rest alone, only send a multicast message to these two connecting devices. And also it can be unicast, that I send data to this uh, router or you know central device. And this central device sent it directly to the intended recipient. So no innocent bystanders who will receive data and have to get rid of it in some way. Finally, we got a wireless access point that connects the devices with a wireless LAN. So I've got wired devices that I want to connect to a wireless LAN. I will need a wireless access point. And wireless network interface card provides network interface, network interface card function of a Wi-Fi LAN. So it basically works as the same conventional network interface card that we just saw over here. But the difference is that now it's functioning for providing services to wireless networks as well. So in this lecture, uh, we covered the basic differences of how the LANs used to look like with, uh, when they were back in co using coaxial co 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 cable, as opposed to now when they're using Ethernet cabling as well as we looked at the different pieces of hardware that make up a LAN, the important piece of hardware. And if we want to, for example, increase the size of a LAN, what options do we have there, so on and so forth. After that, we looked at the different implementations of your successful uh, topologies with respect to wired configuration as well as wireless configuration. Now, in the following lectures, we'll be looking at Ethernet protocol and the Ethernet standard itself as well as the CSMACD and why it's not used. And hopefully after that, we'll start looking at the basic structure that's implemented using your, uh, on the internet. There is no structure, there's no hierarchy on the internet except for this one thing that is known as your internet service provider. If there's a hierarchy, it's because of these guys over here. Otherwise, there's no hierarchy in the internet. There's no one single boss on the internet, okay? So we'll be looking into this part later on, inshallah.